everybody, I'm Rory Carnett, uh, Weekend DIYer. Uh, just looking all over the internet for uh, good installation videos on uh, uh, living wall systems and I was disappointed to not find very many for interior systems like the one that I want to design uh, that will be self-draining as opposed to self-circulating with a pump, um, self-watering with an irrigation line. So what I've decided to do is uh, piece together a lot of the information and facts that I've uh, found on different sites for different uh, types of installations and chronicle that on my own uh, installation video. So as you can see here, I have uh, most of the rough-in uh, ready. Um, I decided to go with a, uh, a wonder board as a backer. Uh, I'm treating this as a true wet zone, as almost you would with it, as if it's a, a bathroom installation. So um, when the living wall system is going to be installed here, I want to know that everything behind it is essentially waterproofed. Uh, we'll talk about the waterproofing uh, in a coming segment, but everything's roughed in. I've, I've created sort of a, a basin here for where it'll all drain down. Um, I made a header board at the very top as well too, thinking that it'd be nice if the, if the plants start growing up, they're going to run into what will eventually be um, a tile um, top. So if you want to come a little closer, I can show you some of the little things that I did here with, uh, um, with the watering. So a pretty simple installation as far as this. I just took a half inch uh, water line for PEX. Um, it's connected to the main system. Um, I have some drain pipes right here. I used to use inch and a half ABS. That's going to connect what will eventually be the two basins. I'm going to build another box here. Um, and it's going to be system kind of A and system B. Just wanted to show everybody what the rough in is. We're going to have here the gas fireplace. So I'll have a, a gas tech obviously hook that up for me. Um, recessed television here as well. I decided to go recess just because I wanted to kind of have that, that clean look. Um, the TV is really not intended to be the, uh, the focal point, but um, in this living room installation, I really it was important to have still the, the TV. Uh, so I also have a little eventually be a, a mantle here, and we're going to use a, 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 essentially a, a stone tile look um, for the facing. Uh, so most of the rough is pretty much ready. I'm going to be, uh, we'll probably, I'll probably be ready in the coming days here just to, to start doing tiling, but I just thought I'd get a little quick video to start of the uh, rough -in. Thanks. Oh, hey, didn't see you there. Well, as you can see, we're darn close to being ready for the living wall system, but we're not quite there yet. Um, I'm doing my best to give step-by-step -step steps on what I had to do to get to what will eventually be two living wall systems. And as, as you can see, a lot of, unlike a lot of the other systems that I'm seeing on the internet where I don't even really get that good step-by-step -step instructions, and that's exactly what I'm providing to you, I'm showing you what had to go on behind the scenes to make this I consider appropriate uh, for a residential application. So treating both zones, these are two zones, treating them both like wet zones I think is really important. So you can see here I use you know, basic wonder board, concrete board. I use the quarter inch thick stuff just because it's a little bit easier to work with. But I'm going to be applying this, uh, this red guard and it's a waterproof membrane. You can paint it on, you can roll it on, you can trowel it on. So one coat apparently gives you, you know, water resistance. Two coats, though, gives you uh, waterproofing. So excited to try that out. That'll be the, the next step. I got a couple little joints I still got to tape. They recommend that on the, uh, the Wonder Board application to use uh, some type of a mortar thin set to bind the joints. It actually made it a little bit stronger, I noticed, too. So since we last spoke, I got this uh, really nice barn bean mantle up. Um, lots of tutorials, lots of different ways on the net how to do this. Um, I just used carriage bolts, I installed four of them, I sheared them off, I made a template, applied the template onto the board, drilled the holes, brought a couple friends over, we pushed it on, applied some PL premium on the bolts. It was that simple. Um, it took probably you know, an hour or two to, to do the work, but um, I really like that as far as an installation method. Got the fireplace in there, that's a really nice Napoleon unit, really liking the looks of that. Um, I'm ready for the tile application, but before I did start a tile, I really wanted to show everybody uh, what's, invo what's involved here. So why don't you come step a little closer and we can look to see how we're planning on hanging what are going to be the pouches that are going to hold the living wall system. Hey, so this is the pouch. Uh, I bought six of them because you can see I don't have one that will fit this size of what is about five feet by approximately seven and a half feet. Um, so it's roughly about 40 square feet of coverage that I'm going to have on plant. So I, I have these. Um, my mother was kind enough to agree to sew these together for me because I'd like to have one large uh, pouch system hanging. I'm sure there's some on the internet that you could purchase that way, but um, I just like the way that these I think are going to be easy, interchangeable. You can apply different plants into that. So we'll see how that goes. But I want to draw your attention to the, to the top piece there. So 
one of the things that I struggled with was finding a way to affix this to the wall. So we have these nice little grommets, these holes that can be installed, but how do you do it? Well, first thing that came to mind was, okay, just go ahead and, you know, drill it into the wall. But then I started thinking about it, being the warrior war that I am, I said, well, I'm actually penetrating my, uh, my membrane system. So I'd be losing all of that work that I did on waterproofing this. And the more I thought about it, I was like, you know what? I said, if, if it's directly against the wall, where's the airflow? Where, where's the breathability? Well, there wouldn't be any. So what I did instead was um, I'm able to find a proper racking system for it. Um, I went and bought to the Home Depot and looked for angle iron. Didn't find any angle iron that I thought was appropriate, but these are really neat. These are um, T-rails. I think that's exactly what they are. These are T-rails posts for like a chain link fence system. So neat in that it's nice and tall. So all I had to do was take my angle grinder and cut it down to size. So that was step one, just zipped it down to size in the angle grinder. Unfortunately, there was no holes for me to mount it to the verticals. So I just took my drill press and fought with some holes. Um, I, did, I ended up doing six, six holes and that's how I fixed it to the top. I don't think I'm gonna use anything more than probably zip ties um, to fasten it the grommets to the uh, to the racking system, and it's basically just going to hang in its place. And I think that's going to be really the best application. You have breathability against the wall. I might use some type of a, an eye hook set up at the bottom. I've decided just to really maybe make it taut at the bottom. But I think the key is here. My takeaway: don't mount it against the wall. Don't compromise your the integrity of your membrane system. And if you are, because technically I did have to drill holes, do it where there's least likely to be moisture damage. Now, one other thing I really want to point your attention to is you, you see these big bins here. These are a focus point in, in, in a positive way. Uh, a lot of the systems that you see in airports and commercial buildings and stuff, they have a, a nice little metal trough and a lot of the time they're self-circulating, meaning that there's a pump there and the pump sends the water back up to the unit and just recycles it over. Great eco-conscious approach. I really, I think that's a great way to do the system. But that's not how I did it. Um, what I'm using here is going to be a self-watering, self-draining, and self-lighting system. So we'll go over how I'm doing that in, a, um, in, in, in the next segment or two. But what I want to draw your attention to here is that I poured a um, speed set compound into my basin. And I, I'm treating this almost like a shower pan. So if you can get a close look at that, just zooming, um, nothing under there is different than my uh, your standard plumbing for a shower. I went with an inch and a half instead of two inches though, mind you, but because there's such little water flow, two inch obviously um, flange, but what I did here is just, you know, created this a nice gentle slope from both sides that will drain the water that will eventually come down here. I'm going to waterproof this. I'm going to tile this so, you know, nothing's ever going to get past that and get, you know, cause water damage, but that is one thing that I wanted to show you here on the rough end. I did on the same thing on both sides. What's really neat is when this is said and done, it's not just going to be a drainage basin. I'm really hoping that my wife and I can plant some uh, some some herbs down there, and it'll be kind of neat because you know the, you know with your uh, your family you can come you know take your own fresh herbs from it. Visual satisfaction of the two walls. They can do whatever plants you want down here. You can use it for your own food. That's what we're going to do anyway. So uh, going back to what I was saying, it's it's self-drained, which means I don't have a pump. It's gonna it's gonna go up to a, to to a gray water system, and it's going to self-drain right out, which is you know a positive. So how am I doing the uh, self-watering? Well, I found this really neat um, Melnor product. It's called the Rain Cloud. Um, it's about two hundred and seven bucks Canadian. It's great because it's a attaches to a regular spigot. So I bought a regular spigot from the depot. I did a. I did the push connect just to make things a little bit easier, but literally it'll screw on like that. It'll plumb right in just to that PEX line, that half inch PEX line that I have from the, the line there. And you will literally be able to just control four different zones. Now, do I need four? Maybe, I don't know. But here's how the zones work. I'm gonna have one zone for the base, for you know whatever plants there is there. Plant, second zone for this living wall system here. Third zone, as you can see here, Here's the irrigation line, routed through the back of my entertainment unit. Quarter inch tubing, nothing special. Um, one's gonna be some type of a self-dripping system in here, that'll be zone three. Zone four is on the wall. So there's your four zones, it works perfectly. Had to buy these adapters separately. Um, I picked them up at the depot, you know, you should be able to get them anywhere, just, um, it basically converts this faucet end to a quarter inch drip line end. Really excited about hooking that up, it's gonna make things a lot easier. All right, hi everybody. So I got most of the red guard on. I'm not doing a specific uh, video tutorial on how I did that. 
I really think you could probably go to the manufacturer website or YouTube RedGuard application, but uh, I did end up, end up doing two coats on the back. I really don't even think I needed to do two. Um, there's going to be such little water that's going to even be splashing up against the tile. But I did uh, do about three or four coats here on the um, on the basin. So um, I used a paintbrush um, to apply it and a roller. Got in most of the areas. Um, did that on both sides. Pretty happy with the coverage overall. You can see some of the pink in the corners. Basically that just means that it's not quite yet dried there. Um, I put in a few eye hooks at the bottom here. The eye hooks I'm going to use to just uh, um, to pin um, the I'm going to just use that to pin the hanging wall pouches to the base just so it doesn't dangle. I got my friend Trig here. He's always here to support me. Uh, so yeah, so I'm actually going to start doing my first uh, few rows of tile. So I'm about all ready for that. I'm going to do the main uh, the main wall first. Um, and then I'm going to work out towards the bins last. Try to get everything nice and square. But uh, So next picture we'll see uh, some finished tile. Hey guys. Exciting time today. I'm actually getting the pouches ready for the irrigation line. So I've already made my first mistake, so I was like, you know what, I should probably stop, do a quick little record, and let you guys know what I did wrong. So what we got here is the pouch that used to be hanging up there, and I thought it would have been a good idea, which I was wrong, to run the irrigation lines when the pouches were hanging on the wall, which it wasn't. So you can see now what I'm doing is I'm now slowly working my way through the pouches. All the research I have showed all the research that I'm showing is to is to put the irrigation line at the bottom with the little T connector. So what I'm doing is I'm just basically putting in a T connector in each of these pouches, and it's basically resting, you know, like this downwards. But it's a little they're tough because these little barbed tips um, with these irrigation lines, which are flexible, but they're just they're really really hard on the fingers to keep pushing them through. I said, let alone when it was vertical up there. So what I did was I went across the entire pouches, and you can see them. And I just drilled a couple holes, two holes, just so I could thread the pipe through like that through each pouch. Ta-da! Oh, I'm so happy. I can't tell you guys enough how happy I am with the way this came out. Better than I had imagined. High level. Some things worked really well, other things didn't. Let's talk about what didn't work very well so you can make your wall even better than, better than uh, my wall came out. Uh, one of the things that I struggled with was the turnover of the plants. I picked plants that probably weren't meant to thrive in this type of an environment. The takeaway, coleus works really well. Haven't had any issue with it. And these tropical plants here, which I'll put the name in the comments below on the, on the video. Um, really thrive as well. Haven't had any die. I'm, a, I'm about 90% coverage over here. I don't know, maybe 75 over here. So this wall is a little bit more flourished than the other wall. Um, just because of my plants that I picked likely. Uh, really happy with it overall. A couple takeaways. I put two eye hooks, if you remember, or three at the very bottom here on each side. I really didn't need them. The wall the, the walls hang nicely with the zip ties from the top. If I was redoing it, I wouldn't put anything at the bottom. Totally unnecessary. I talked about having herbs at the bottom. You could plant herbs if you want any of the pouches. Having them at the bottom it wasn't functional. Uh, we ended up just doing uh, you know rocks at the bottom. Way better for drainage and just overall, I, I like the look of it. It's cleaner looking. I, I love it. Speaking of plants, keep in mind that when you're selecting plants, early in the design stages, it's the perfect time to start planting them. Said, this took four months to grow. Four months. So you, you're in for the long haul. Said, you could have instant plants if you went to the store and paid three dollars a plant for 550 plants. Sure. But if you want to build this and really benefit and see it grow, you know, when you're in the early design phases, grow them then. Because by the time you're done, you're going to have that instant wall. Mine took a little bit longer to grow. Uh, the lighting system, I picked the perfect lighting system. I, I, I'm so happy with it. Normal light bulbs, amazing. Love them. White to the eye, but they actually are full spectrum, so the plants are thriving under it. I control the whole thing from my um, from my smartphone, which I which I really like. It's the surely 
on off button is a little gimmicky um, because really I'm not, I don't have to do that that often. But what's not gimmicky are the are all the different cycle times that I can choose. I turn mine on at 7 p.m. Turn it off at 7 a.m. I purposely picked a 7 p.m. to 7 a.m. because it's off peak time for the electrical grid. So it's cheaper. You can run it during the day if you want to showcase it, sure, but I picked an off peak one. Uh, so the lighting system's been great. The Melmer Rain Cloud product, nothing but positive things to say about that as well. Four zones, and as you remember, I did one zone here, two zone there, three and four. My takeaway, just my advice for you, after trying it over and over again, I have zone one run first, shut off zone one, turn on zone two, shut it off, zone three, then zone four. And I can control that all from my phone. It's amazing. The, the, app, the app is amazing. So I have one, two, then three, and then four go on. I don't do them at the same time. I find that it's, it's competing and that the zone furthest away to the pocket furthest away from the water line gets the least. So you'd have things at the bottom that wouldn't get enough water. And if you did it right, you shouldn't have to do any type of self-watering. And I don't right now, but I have to do it with that type of a split. I wish you guys could stand in my uh, living room with me right now and just and, and smell what I'm smelling right now. You can actually smell the plants, so the aerosols of the of the soil. You can actually smell the different types of plants that are kind of mixing. It has a really positive influence when you're sitting here. People comment it all the time when they come into the house. They can smell the plants, and it's a really positive experience. Um, and, and that feeling, that feel-good feeling of, of nature like that, it's called a biophilic design quality, which is how you feel when you walk out in nature down a trail. That feeling of being part of nature, that's the biophilic benefit of this uh, living wall. So here it is. Couldn't be happier with it. Thanks for taking the journey with me. If you have any questions, put it in the comments below. Um, I really would appreciate a like on the video too. And uh, thanks, guys. Take care.